What if I told you there's a number system where multiplication isn't just non-commutative, it's downright chaotic? A system where some numbers square to zero and where the order of operations actually changes the result. Buckle up, because today we're diving into Quintinians, a five-dimensional number system that breaks all the conventional rules of algebra. So far, we've looked at a bunch of number systems. We started with complex numbers, which live in two dimensions. Then we moved on to quaternions in four dimensions, which are especially useful for handling 3D rotations. I even introduced mocavions, my own custom three-dimensional system. But now we're leveling up with the five-dimensional quintinians. In this system, numbers pick up brand new properties, wild new behaviors, and a whole lot of quirks. So get ready to stretch your imagination. Part one, algebraic definition. A quintinian is written as Q equals A, plus B times I, plus C times J, plus D times K, plus E times L. Here, the elements I and J are imaginary units. They satisfy the rules. I squared equals negative one, and J squared also equals negative one. But now we bring in two special elements, K and L. These are called nilpotent elements, and that means K squared equals zero, and L squared equals zero. But it gets crazier. The real twist lies in how all these units interact with each other. Their multiplication isn't normal, and that's what makes this system so fascinating. Let's break it down with a multiplication table. Here's how each of the five basis elements multiply with each other. We have a table with rows and columns labeled 1, i, j, k, and l, where k equals i times j and l equals j times i. Across the first row, 1 times anything gives you that same thing, 1, i, j, k, and l. In the second row, which starts with i, i times i equals negative 1, i times j equals k, i times k equals negative j, i times l equals 0. In the third row for j, j times i equals l, j times j equals negative 1, j times k equals 0, j times l equals negative i. In the fourth row for k, k times i equals negative j, k times j equals negative i, k squared equals 0, k times l equals 1. And finally, in the fifth row, for L, L times I equals zero, L times J equals negative I, L times K equals one, L squared equals zero. Let's go over a few key takeaways here. First, anti-commutativity. This means the order of multiplication changes the result. For example, I times J equals K, but J times I equals L. So clearly, IJ does not equal JI. Second, we see nilpotency in action. Some elements square to zero. Watch this. K squared equals IJ times IJ, which is I times J times I times J. Now rearranging, that's i times ji times j, and ji is l, so we now have i times l times j. But i times l equals negative k. So now we have negative k times j, and k times j equals negative i. So now negative k times j equals zero. Therefore, k squared equals zero. So finally, there's non-associativity. That means grouping matters. For example, if you group as i times k and then times j, that gives negative j times j, which equals one. Uh, but if you group it as i times the result of k times j, that's i times zero, which is zero. Same elements, different groupings, completely different outcomes. Part two, matrix representation. To get a better grip on all this, we can use matrices to represent each of these units. This helps us visualize and compute everything more clearly. The identity element one is just the three by three identity matrix. One equals row one, one, zero, zero, row two, one, zero, row three, zero, zero, one. Now i is row 1, 0, 1, 0, row 2, negative 1, 0, 0, row 3, 0, 0, tj is row 1, 0, 0, 1, row 2, 0, t, 0, row 3, negative 1, 0, 0. Now k, which equals ij, is row 1, 0, 0, 0, row 2, row 3, 0, 0, 0. And l, which equals jii, is row 1, 0, 0, 0, row 2, 0, 0, row 3, 0, negative 1, 0. Let's test this by multiplying the I matrix by the J matrix. So I times J is matrix I zero one minus one zero 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 T times matrix J zero zero one zero T zero minus one zero. The result is row one zero 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 row two zero zero negative one row three zero zero zero, which perfectly matches the matrix representation of K. Now let's reverse it. J times I matrix J zero one zero T zero minus one known zero times matrix I zero one minus one zero 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 T. The result is row 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, row 3, 0, negative 1, 0. That matches the matrix for L. So even in matrix form, the order of multiplication matters, just like in our algebraic definitions. This confirms the anti-commutative structure of our system.
In conclusion, quintinians are wild, five-dimensional numbers with non-commutative, non-associative multiplication, and strange nilpotent elements like K and L that square to zero. Now here's the big question. Should we take the leap into Sextinian's next six-dimensional extensions of these wild ideas? Uh, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't watched my earlier videos on quaternions or mocabions, go check them out. They'll help this all make even more sense. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more deep dives into the untamed world of advanced math.